Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to our monthly ASEAN Community Challenges and Opportunity Program in English. My name is Dr. Wilfred Herman. As you know, I'm the Executive Director of the Human Development Forum Foundation, a registered Thai non-for-profit organization coping with ASEAN topics in various areas. Our main topic today is ASEAN Community Economic Challenges and Opportunities. Since 31st of December 2015, we do have the ASEAN Community. However, in the ASEAN countries, not many people care about this. And there's not much new things to see now. So we want to help to clarify some major questions in this year's program, what changed since we have ASEAN community. Today we will center on what is the core issue of ASEAN, the economic question. And therefore I invited a very special guest, Dr. Kirida from the Thailand Development Research Institute. She is a research director there and I'm quite sure that Dr. Kirida can uh, answer some of the very urgent and burning questions. Good evening, Dr. Kirida. Welcome to our program and please introduce yourself briefly. Good evening, Wilfred. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for inviting me to your program. Well, as you have mentioned, I am a research director at the Thailand Development Research Institute, which is a leading independent think tank in Thailand. Well, my major role in the Thailand Development Research Institute, or as we call the TDRI, is on international economics research and advisory services that um, centers around that. And of course, with international research, ASEAN is a very important region and area that we also do research mm -hmm. and study on. So, which is why I'm very pleased to be here today to share with you some of the, um, you know, the findings that we have gathered on the progress of the ASEAN Economic Community Integration. Okay, thank you very much for this short introduction. And I'm quite sure that we will have a little bit longer talk after our commercial break. ขยะเหล่านี้สามารถนํามาเรซิเคิลเป็นสมุดสิ่งที่มีค่าสําหรับพวกเขาได้ด้วยแนวคิดการใช้ทรัพยากรธรรมชาติอย่างรู้คุณ
Thirdly, we would like to see greater mobility of professionals within the ASEAN countries. Fourthly, it's the freer flows of capital. That means the stock market, the bond markets will be more integrated so money can flow more freely. And the fifth one is the freer flows of investment in other um, sectors other than the services sector. So these are the five main sub-pillars, as, as one would say, under the economic community of ASEAN. Mm -hmm. And if you look at these five pillars, let's start with the first one. It's the easiest one, so free flow of goods. What would be the biggest challenge and what would be the biggest opportunity if you sum it small Sure. Together. Under the free flow of goods, maybe let me um, give you a snapshot of the progress mm -hmm. so far, Dr. Wilfred. Actually, um, as we know, ASEAN is made up of 10 member countries, six of which are the original members, and four, which are Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam, mm -hmm. are the new members. So actually, under the free flow of goods, we have what we call the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement, which you know many of the countries have um, already sort of uh, fulfilled their commitments. So actually by 2010, the first six original countries have already reduced their tariffs down to zero mm -hmm. for most of their tariff lines under the AFTA or the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement. Then by 2015, the four new members, which is Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam, agreed to reduce their tariffs to zero as well. But they're also given a grace period of three years until 2018. So they have a, a bit more time to reduce mm -hmm. most of their tariff lines to zero. But if you actually look at the tariff data so far, we actually see progress in this area, meaning that the original six countries have tariffs very close to zero now. While as the CLMV or the four new members have also seen their tariffs coming down continuously, it's not zero yet because they still mm -hmm. have time, but it's making pretty good progress. And we think by 2018, most of that will become zero as well. So I would say on the tariff side, we have made very good progress on that. But of course, there are other areas such as non-tariff barriers, <laughs> which still have to be negotiated uh, because they're still high, especially on the licensing or the standards, you know, issues, which are used as non-tariff barriers mm. in many of the ASEAN countries. So those would still have to be negotiated and reduced going forward. And of course, other than just tariff and non-tariff barriers, if you want freer flow of goods in countries, transportation, logistics between them have to yeah. be pretty easy and yeah. free. And um, as, as we know, looking at, you know, for example, the World Bank's Logistics Performance Index, we see that, of course, you know, the more developed countries in ASEAN have a much better performance in terms of the logistics. And here I'm not just talking about the quality of the physical infrastructure like roads or rail, but also you know, efficiency of customs, you know, mm -hmm. how easy it is to actually drive from one country to another, immigration policies, and so on and so forth. So, you know, I mean, there are many issues still to be ironed out, um, especially in the CLMV or the Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam um, countries where the logistics system there, including, as I mentioned, you know, the customs mm. and also, you know, the, the transportation sort of um, agreements to drive your truck yeah. from one yeah. country to another and the immigration policies of drivers, for example, still have to be sort of streamlined. So that is also still another area, I would say, that we would still need to make progress, especially in the four um, new members of ASEAN. Thank you for that. I have one question for the normal c citizen on the street in Bangkok, uh, in Manila. What is the effect of a free flow of goods? Mm -hmm. Definitely, free flow of goods mean that, means that basically that goods um, that are otherwise not available in one's country right, can be imported mm -hmm. at a lower cost. Mm -hmm. okay. For example, tariffs, right? import mm -hmm. tariffs that used to be high are now lower, which means that the price of these goods that are imported for consumers in your country will be lower as well. So that uh, you know, reduces the cost of, of the, you know, the, the goods as well and the increases the availability of those goods. Mm -hmm. So you know, not only tariffs, right? Um, better logistics, meaning lower logistics costs, that would also lower the, mm -hmm. you know, the price of the goods as well. So as we can see, you know, as we um, you know, have made 
quite considerable progress under the, as, as I mentioned, the ASEAN Free Trade mm -hmm. Agreement. Actually, over the past 10 years, trade within ASEAN have really blossomed mm. because you know, of this lower um, cost of goods. You know, ASEAN countries are trading more amongst themselves because we're quite different. We're, there are countries that are quite developed, like Singapore. There are countries that are sort of developed, like Malaysia and Thailand, and there are others that are um, trying to catch up. So, you know, because of this diversity, we can actually complement each other in mm. terms of our yep. goods. So, you know, so um, we can, we see a lot of trade going on within ASEAN since we have reduced tariffs. So I'm a bit, you know, optimistic in this area that mm -hmm. we're able to also sort out the non-tariff barriers and also the, the log logistics issues. There should be even more trade within ASEAN itself because it has already shown that there are actually gains, you know, to a, to a common person <laughs> in any country yeah. when, t when trade of goods is more free. So it means the, cu the normal customer will have some advantages. Exactly, great availability right. of goods and those goods will have a lower price as well. And what about the free flow of investment inside the services? Mm. That is a um, more challenging area because traditionally ASEAN countries have been quite protective of their services sector. Mm -hmm. They're actually more protective of the services sector than the goods sector. So given the, you know, the high sort of barrier <laughs> that has existed for many, many years, when member countries agree on the, uh, under the ASEAN economic you know, blueprint that they will integrate more under the services sector, it means that they would have to open up their services sector to greater shareholding by ASEAN member countries. And this means up to 70% mm. of shareholding by ASEAN member countries. So when I actually look at the progress so far <laughs> in this area, I still see a lot of gap, meaning that many countries are still not opening up, mm. you know, allowing ASEAN member countries um, and companies from ASEAN to hold up to 70%. Mm. Of, of shares. As you can, you know, an example will be in Thailand, where we have a Foreign Business Act yeah. that only limits foreign shareholding to 49%. So unless, <coughs> you know, each country goes back and sort of amends their law or rules, um, this, you know, 70% shareholding sort of mark that um, the ASEAN economic community has set will probably not be reached. But you know, it is a work in progress. It is a work in progress. There have been, been many rounds of negotiations. Mm -hmm. um, this is now the 10th round of negotiations under the services business um, investments. And we see more and more sectors being added by each country mm -hmm. um, you know, as the rounds progress. Of course, they usually add the, you know, the less sensitive, as one would say, sectors or sectors that you know, have, you know, very, um, you know, insignificant <laughs> <laughs> impact on their, on their economy. For example, you know, satellite exploration, <laughs> that would <Okay>. be one, <laughs> um, which, you know, which would be uh, included um, in there because many ASEAN countries don't, don't do that. But um, in any case, you know, there, there has been some progress, um, but m much more has to be done, especially in this area. Mm -hmm. I mean, in this area, also services mm. comes very close with the free movement of labor. I mean, exactly. I'm coming from EU, so we have a quite free movement of labor, mm. but as I understand, it's still restricted for the ASEAN area, correct? Well, it is restricted, especially for professionals, mm. um, for, for you know, high talent. Well, ASEAN has been more relaxed on low-skilled labor, <laughs> so mm. maybe it's about time that we think about you know, exchanging talent among you know, ASEAN countries. Of course, the exception is Singapore, which has been quite open in welcoming talent to help develop their own country. And we have already seen you know, that Singapore has actually grown by, you know, talent from other countries as well. Well, as the other um, ASEAN countries at the moment have still a high barrier in, you know, allowing, um, talent, as we mm. say, professionals, from other countries to join them, not only from ASEAN, but from other countries around the world. So under the ASEAN Economic Community Framework, there are, um, I would say, seven professions plus mm. hotel and travel, which is the eighth you know, area, that member countries have agreed to open up you know, to um, member ASEAN countries. So, you know, with that, there is that the first, you know, um, seven professionals are 
doctors, dentists, and, mm. and um, engineers. So very high talent architects. Um, and also in the hotel and travel, you know, there is you know, also some non-skilled or low-skilled labor there as well, such as you know, bellboy and pool boys as well. But even so, there are still quite a number of barriers in this area, given that many of the countries still require that you know, ASEAN, um, pop, uh, you know, ASEAN engineers or architects, for example, would need to have a license once they enter you know, a country they want to work in. Okay. So that's you know the, the area that we still need to make um, more progress on. Okay, thank you very much, and we are coming back after the commercial break. ด้วยแนวคิดการใช้ทรัพยากรธรรมชาติอย่างรู้คุณค่าและให้เกิดประโยชน์สูงสุดทําให้ดอนเมืองโทเวได้เริ่มดําเนินโครงการสมุดกร
ASEAN has actually traded more and you know, grew more of that. So with the other areas as well, I believe that if we do so, we would be able to trade not only more with each other, but foreign direct investments will also come into ASEAN because don't forget ASEAN is the sixth largest region mm. in terms of economic size in the world and it's one of the fastest growing in the world. So, you know, we're already a pretty sexy, as one would say, <laughs> region and if we even do more on our integration, we would probably be able to actually attract more foreign direct investments, trade more among mm. ourselves and prosper together. Okay, thank you very much. I think one of the key points of the skilled labor, you are a good example for that. I think uh, Thailand want to keep uh, talent like you in Thailand and not losing the talent to Singapore. This concludes our program today. I would like to thank our guest, Dr. Kirida from TDRI. And um, I also would like to thank the people before and behind the cameras. And we see each other in the next month's program with the continuation of ASEAN Community Challenges and Opportunities Full English Program. Good evening and goodbye till next month.